My dad hid a devastating secret for years now. His affair with my aunt has destroyed our family. Growing up, there has always been a constant conflict in our house regarding our cousin Mary. You see, I'm my dad's youngest child and I have two older brothers, Brett and Jason, who are twins. The three of us agree that our dad loves Mary and shows more priority to her over us. This might sound childish to complain, but imagine spending your whole life being overshadowed and compared to your cousin, who isn't all that impressive to begin with. Mary, my cousin, is one year younger than me and the only child of my uncle and aunt. Naturally, they adore her and shower her with affection, which is completely understandable. What really bothers us, though, is how much our dad dotes on Mary. It feels like he loves her more than us, always buying her everything she wants, giving her more attention than he gives us. This favoritism has always been a sore spot for my brothers and me, making us feel overlooked and undervalued since we were young. Mary and I started attending school in the same year, even though we were a year apart, as both our dad and uncle wanted us to grow up together. They would push us to spend time with each other all the time. Every day, my dad would make me wake up way early in the morning to get ready. He would then drive us to my uncle's house just to pick up Mary before dropping us both off at school. I never understood why she couldn't just take the bus like every other kid. If my dad only had to drop me off, I wouldn't have to wake up so early. However, whenever I questioned my dad about it, he would tell me to stop being selfish and to treat Mary like my own sister, and this would leave me feeling even more frustrated and confused as if my feelings didn't matter. At school, Mary would constantly bug me to play with her or spend time with her. Unlike me, she was an introverted kid who didn't have many friends. I, on the other hand, had friends and liked spending time with them, which made Mary unhappy. Every day after school, when my dad came to pick us up, she would complain to him if I didn't spend time with her during lunch that day. Dad would then scold me for not including my little sister, while I would just roll my eyes and ignore him. It really bugged me how much he showed favoritism towards her over his own children. If you're wondering whether my uncle and aunt saw any problem with this, they didn't. You see, my dad and uncle have always been very close. They're only a year and a half apart, so they grew up together. My uncle, being the older one, taught my dad how to ride a bike, shave his mustache, and change the oil in the car. Their own dad wasn't really present, so my uncle and dad essentially supported one another and always had each other's backs. This is why they always pushed for both of our families to be together all the time. In the beginning, my older brothers told me that mom never enjoyed spending a lot of time with my uncle and aunt, but she had no choice since they would visit our place frequently. Whenever she tried to discuss it with dad, he would dismiss her feelings and saying that family is meant to be close and that he enjoyed spending time with his brother. While my mother didn't mind if dad spent time with his brother, she felt obligated to socialize because my aunt came along as well. I guess sometimes people just don't click, which is why my mother just didn't enjoy spending time with my aunt every day. She found her to be very talkative, overly familiar, and flirtatious with men. This was understandable as my aunt and uncle at that time had an open marriage, which meant they could freely flirt and sleep with whoever they wanted to. My aunt would frequently share details with my mother about the various men she had flings with, which made my mother uncomfortable since she did not believe in that sort of marriage. She also felt it was inappropriate to have such conversations in a household with children, and that's why whenever my aunt and uncle visited, she would send Brett and Jason to play with other kids in the neighborhood to prevent them from overhearing these adult conversations. And my dad, on the other hand, never really had any issue with my uncle and aunt's marriage and would laugh hearing their adventurous stories. The year my mother became pregnant with me, my aunt finally confided in her that she also wished to conceive. However, she and my uncle had been grappling with fertility issues ever since they got married. Upon hearing from the doctor that they might never have a child, my aunt and uncle were deeply saddened and often argued. Eventually, they decided to stay married but have an open relationship so they could explore other connections while remaining committed to each other. However, my aunt admitted that she still yearned to have a child of her own. My mother encouraged her to consider alternative options such as adoption or IVF. Although these choices were costly, they were viable paths to pursue if they were serious about starting a family. When I was born, my mother experienced complications that tragically resulted in her death due to blood loss. My brothers have shared with me how traumatic it was for all of them to feel the conflict of emotions, sadness over our mother's passing, and joy that I was born safe and healthy, just as our mom would have wanted. However, dad was inconsolable. He refused to leave our mother's side and sat next to her, unable to process the fact that his wife had passed away. I can't begin to imagine how much it would have hurt him, but he has never shown any resentment towards me or blamed me in any way, even though I wouldn't blame him if he did. I wish my mother were alive as I miss her all the time, even though I never got to meet her. My brothers have so many stories about her while I only know her through pictures. The first year after I was born, my dad and brothers faced challenges in taking care of me as they were not accustomed to caring for a girl. Despite this, my dad took charge and my brothers followed his lead. These three men have always been there for me unconditionally. 
I can't recall a single day when my brothers fought with me. While growing up, they would take me with them everywhere, and I was like their little sidekick. And even when they played video games, they would let me sit right by their side so I could watch them play in awe. They have never argued with me over food and always let me have the biggest slice of pizza if I wanted it. I have always had priority when it comes to using the bathroom because they understand that some days of the month, I might need it more than they do. I know brothers can be mean and annoying at times, but mine are complete sweethearts. They treat me like a princess. While I've heard many stories from my friends about how siblings fight with each other, I haven't experienced that because both of my brothers are calm and level-headed. The most we've ever disagreed about was a movie and even that got resolved quickly with a simple vote. Our bond has always been harmonious and I feel lucky to have such understanding, caring brothers. After my mother passed away, my uncle and aunt were always there for us as we grew up. Thankfully, my aunt got pregnant just a year after I was born. The news of my aunt's pregnancy was a source of joy for everyone in our family because they were aware of the long struggle and effort my aunt and uncle had put into trying to conceive a child. When Mary was born, she and I spent a lot of time together since we were only a year apart and both my dad and uncle wanted us to bond from an early age. Initially, I liked spending time with Mary, but when you are forced to spend time with someone every other day, you quickly start to lose interest. As I started going to school, I made new friends and naturally began spending less time with Mary. However, both my dad and uncle expected me to be there for her and to look out for her at all times. Mary has a tendency to be a crybaby and has always been quite dramatic because she grew up with siblings. She never learned to share and was always very possessive of her things. Unfortunately, my uncle and aunt never corrected this behavior, so it continued into her school years. She would argue with anyone who tried to borrow her pencil or eraser. Whenever she had a disagreement with one of her classmates, she would have a meltdown on the floor. Naturally, kids don't like other kids who behave this way, which means they stopped including her in their games or would avoid her on the playground. Whenever she complained to her parents about this, they would blame the teacher or other students for not being inclusive rather than acknowledging the flaws in their own daughter. Being forced to spend a lot of time with Mary was natural for me to lose my patience around her. She wasn't easy to get along with. If she wanted to watch a TV show, we had to sit and watch it even if I didn't share the same taste. If she wanted to eat at a particular restaurant, I had to agree, even if I didn't want to or she would throw a tantrum. If I had to attend a birthday party where only I was invited, my aunt would pressure my dad to convince me to take Mary with me so she could make new friends. I would end up arguing with my dad because I was becoming exhausted from always being around her. Mary also had a bad habit of always showing interest in the guys I liked. If she saw me getting close to a guy, she would approach him and introduce herself as my sister, emphasizing how close we were. Then, she would proceed to spill embarrassing childhood stories about me, as if they were funny. When my brothers graduated from high school, they were already aware that our dad didn't have enough savings to send them to college. Consequently, both of them worked very hard to secure partial scholarships that would significantly aid them. They also had to take out student loans in order to finish their education. The expectation was that I would follow in my brother's footsteps and hopefully get a scholarship. I knew before I graduated from high school that I needed to improve my grades and start applying to good universities. Therefore, during my last two years of high school, I reduced the amount of time I spent with my friends and focused more on my studies. Mary would often text or call me to hang out, but I would ignore her requests. She would insist that people our age needed to have fun and that I was wasting away my time in the library. The year I graduated high school, I received acceptance letters from two of my favorite universities and needed to choose between them. Mary had also been accepted into a university, which was not the same as my options. However, one of the universities that accepted me was in the same city as her university, so my family expected me to choose that university. Mary excitedly talked to me about how she couldn't wait to get an apartment with me and live together so we could attend our classes and also have fun. I couldn't help but find it cringeworthy. I liked my cousin, but I didn't want to spend my entire college life stuck with her against my will, so I chose the other university without discussing it with my dad. Since I had a scholarship and was the one taking out a loan, it was essentially my decision anyway. When my dad found out, he was furious with my decision. He tried to force me to change my university, but I firmly told him that it was my life and my choice. He expressed how disappointed he was that I would knowingly choose another university just because I didn't want to spend time with my cousin. He tried to convince me that having a sibling like Mary is the best thing in life. This frustrated me, and I retorted that I did have siblings, my brothers, and I loved spending time with them. I told him he should stop forcing me to spend time with her because I was an adult now and needed to make my own decisions in life. Both my aunt and uncle also made their disappointment known. They called me to express how much Mary had been looking forward to living with me and how it would have made her college experience much better. However, I just didn't care and was happy with my choice of college. One day, as I was packing my things into boxes and preparing to soon move out of home into my college dorm, I heard my aunt pull up in her car. 
This wasn't unusual since lately. After my brothers moved out, she would sometimes come over to spend time with my dad or cook for us. Typically during these visits, I would try to stay out of the house so as to avoid her. However, this time I was home, so I locked myself inside my room and remained silent, hoping that my dad would think I was asleep and wouldn't call me to join them. I could hear the two of them talking and laughing downstairs. Curiosity got the better of me, so I peeked my head out like any other curious child and strained my ears to listen to their conversation. That's when I heard my dad mention something about a college fund, which immediately caught my interest. I tiptoed out of my room and made my way downstairs to listen more closely. As I listened in, I heard my dad tell my aunt that he had been saving money for Mary's college fund for a while now. He assured her that Mary would never have to take out a college fund because he had it covered. This revelation left me stunned as I stood there, wondering what he was talking about. My dad had never once mentioned anything about a college fund to me or my brothers, so why would he set one up for my cousin? I felt extremely hurt, wondering why my dad would make such financial arrangements for Mary's education without ever discussing it with me or considering my own financial situation. I tiptoed back upstairs and called my brothers to ask them about it. They were just as shocked as I was and asked me if I was sure about what I heard. I assure them I was. The three of us tried to understand our dad's decision, but none of us had a clue. This is when something clicked in my mind. I knew I could freely talk in front of my brothers, so I voiced out my question without any hesitation. Do you think Mary might be dad's child? My brothers were momentarily silent. Then Jason spoke first, initially dismissing the idea as impossible, but Brett remained silent for a moment. When Jason prodded him for his thoughts, Brett admitted to having had similar suspicions in the past since there was no other explanation for why my dad would be so unusually close to his brother's daughter. Brett pointed out the physical similarities between Mary and us, like our dark brown hair inherited from our dad, which was unlike our uncle's blonde hair. Now I know that such resemblances could be purely genetic, but we knew there was something about our dad's behavior towards Mary that had always seemed perplexing to us. I made up my mind and informed my brothers that I would find out the truth. They asked me how. I told them that I planned to secretly obtain a sample of Mary's hair and get a DNA test done. We needed to get to the bottom of this mystery. If she was not dad's child, then great. We would have nothing to worry about. However, if she is, then we need to know the truth. Brett and Jason reluctantly agreed, urging me to be careful so that no one else would find out about our plan. That week, I asked Mary to hang out with me and discreetly obtain some strands of hair that had fallen on her coat. I felt guilty keeping it in my pocket, almost as if I was doing something illegal. However, the need to uncover the truth outweighed my unease. The anticipation during the week leading up to the result of the DNA test was nerve-wracking. I kept hoping and praying that I was wrong about my suspicions because I didn't know how I would handle it if Mary turned out to be my sister. The day finally arrived when I received the DNA test results, and to my shock, they confirmed that Mary was indeed my sister as we share the same biological parent. It felt like the ground had shifted beneath my feet as I read the result, and I was left reeling with a whirlwind of emotions. Confusion, disbelief, anger, and sorrow all mixed together. I couldn't believe that my dad had kept such a significant secret from us for so long. The fact that Mary was actually my half-sister and not my cousin changed everything for me, and I struggled to come to terms with this new reality. It was a lot to process. I needed time to let it sink in. I felt betrayed by my dad for hiding this from us, and I was angry at myself for not seeing the signs earlier. Clearly, him and my aunt spent a little too much time together and likely had an affair. It was unnerving to process the fact that Mary was born just a year after me, which meant that my dad had an affair with his brother's wife within a year of my mother's passing. The thought of it left me feeling disgusted and overwhelmed. Everything also made so much sense about why my dad would force me to hang out with Mary all the time, even if I needed some space. I caught my brothers in tears. They immediately sensed that something was terribly wrong, and when I shared the news with them that Mary was our half-sister, they were shocked for a few minutes to say anything. I sent them photos of the DNA test results so they could see for themselves. Brett and Jason were furious and insisted on coming back home so that we could confront Dad together and get to the bottom of this. However, I knew that confronting our dad about such a disgusting revelation wouldn't change anything for us. He had slept with his brother's wife, which had resulted in her getting pregnant with Mary. There was nothing that we could say to change this truth. Instead, I suggested that we cut him off. Our dad clearly did nothing for us and left us to fend for ourselves, taking on college loans to pay off our tuition, while he knowingly saved money just for his affair baby. Brett agreed with me while Jason was still seething. Now that we knew their secret, I decided that we could have a little fun exposing the truth. I orchestrated a plan where I would reveal the secret to Mary in a subtle yet impactful way, so my dad could not escape anymore from the consequences. I asked my brothers to not tell dad anything for the time being. 
Instead, I asked if they could come over on my moving day to drive me to college because I didn't want to go there with my dad, and they immediately agreed. So on the day of my departure from college, I invited Mary to see me off one last time. When she arrived, my dad was his usual excited self around her and gave her a warm hug. During my conversation with Mary, she excitedly shared with me about her plans to move into an apartment and how her mother had recently revealed a college fund she had secretly set up for her years ago. I couldn't help but scoff inwardly and mentally roll my eyes, fully aware of the truth behind it all. Mary was thrilled about how helpful it will be for her future and continued to brag about how her mother had managed to save thousands of dollars over the years so that she did not have to worry about taking a loan like me. When my brothers pulled into the driveway to help me pack my stuff, they didn't even greet my dad properly. The tension was palpable, and my dad must have noticed it too. He tried to approach them, but they gave him the cold shoulder. This was a new dynamic for us, because the three of us had always been very respectful towards him. However, after discovering the secret, we couldn't look at him the same way. My brothers practically ignored him as they packed my belongings, and I helped them here and there. Once everything was packed, I turned to bid my dad goodbye. He tried to hug me, but I awkwardly took a step back, avoiding the embrace. He stopped and looked hurt, asking if something was wrong, and that's when I met his gaze and told him that I wished mom were here. He appeared confused and wounded, but I didn't care. After the kind of secret he had hidden from us, I wanted to lash out and scream at him, but I managed to control myself. I hugged Mary goodbye and slipped her an envelope, instructing her to open it in front of my dad after I drove away. She nodded understandingly and bid me farewell. Driving away, I felt a mix of emotions, relief, sadness, and a tinge of guilt. I knew the aftermath of this revelation would be tumultuous for our family, but the truth had to come out. Mary needed to discover the burden of the secret we knew about her mother and our dad. As an extra measure, I also sent a photo of the DNA result to my uncle, ensuring that he would not be kept in the dark. As you can imagine, within just half an hour, my phone was ringing off the charts. My brothers also received multiple calls from my aunt and dad, clearly trying to reach out to us to justify their actions, but they never picked up. Then my uncle called and I decided to answer since I knew how shocked he must be after reading the document. He asked me directly if the test was fake, and I felt the surge of emotions flood through me as I told him that I wished it was. I told him how the news had shattered mine and my brother's perception of our dad when we found out. My uncle then took a deep breath and asked me if I was doing okay. I could hear from his voice that he was genuinely concerned, and that's when I burst out crying. My uncle had always been a significant figure in our lives and I wished I never had to deliver such bad news to him. However, despite his own shock and hurt, he showed his goodness of heart by asking me about my well-being during such a difficult time. My uncle consoled me and assured me that I had done nothing wrong. He thanked me for revealing the truth to him. Now that I've moved into college and my brothers have left, I've had time to reflect on how big of an impact this has had on my family. My stomach hurts and it feels like I have done something wrong. I'm so scared about what will happen to us as a family. Ada for revealing the truth to my cousin. Did I do the right thing? Update 1. The aftermath of revealing the truth was plunged. The aftermath of revealing the truth has plunged my family into absolute chaos. I have found out that Mary and my uncle have swiftly moved out of the house since the revelation as they don't want anything to do with my aunt. Meanwhile, my aunt's reaction has been volatile and hurtful. She has bombarded me with a barrage of texts ranging from abusive accusations to attempts at justifying her affair with my dad. In her messages, she even went so far as to blame me for breaking up her marriage. She wrote how my mother would be ashamed of me for trying to hurt and break up the family. As for my dad, he has maintained a stony silence since that day, refusing to acknowledge his mistake. Not a single text or call has come from him until now, which is fine for me since I know he can't say anything to make me forgive him. Thank you to everyone for your comments. While I know deep down that revealing the truth was the right thing to do, the guilt still weighs heavily on me. I never wanted to cause such devastation within my family, but the truth had to come out someday no matter the consequences. Update 2. A lot of you suggested that I should reach out and apologize to Mary, but I've made the decision not to do so. To be honest, I will never see Mary as my half-sister, even though it's clear that my dad had an affair with her mom. She will always just be a cousin to me. That doesn't mean I harbor any hatred towards her. I don't. I was just always forced to take care of her or play with her, which might have built up some resentment, but I genuinely hope she finds happiness and heals from all of this. Also, some of you have mixed opinions about why I cut my dad off and want me to hear his side of the story. Why would I even do that? Imagine if your parents slept with their sibling's spouses and had a child, keeping it a secret for years and forcing you to be friends with your cousin just so they could spend time with this child without anyone finding out. Would you be okay with that? Because I can't. I've thought about this long and hard and I can't accept such a betrayal and deceitful act. Update 3. So I wanted to give an update to what has happened to my family. My uncle and Mary came to visit me at college and I was quite nervous about meeting them. 
However, as soon as my uncle saw me, he warmly hugged me, which eased some of my tension. When Mary and I greeted each other politely, there was a bit of awkwardness in the air. As we sat down to talk, my uncle informed me that he had cut off all contact with my dad since that day. It was a bit sad to hear, but not unexpected given the affair my dad had with his wife. The conversation was heavy, but there was also a sense of closure in knowing that my uncle had made a decision for his own well-being. My uncle then went on to tell me how he was going to be divorcing my aunt and asked if she had reached out to me. I showed him some of the messages she had been sending, which infuriated him. He took photos of those messages and assured me that he and his divorce lawyer would take care of it. I was surprised that he had already hired a divorce lawyer. My uncle explained that he couldn't stay with her anymore after the way she had betrayed him. I nodded, understanding his sentiments. Mary then asked how I was doing in college, and I told her I was doing fine. She inquired if I was already aware that the college fund her mother mentioned had actually been set up by my dad for her. I nodded and told her that I had overheard the conversation the evening her mother had come over alone to talk to my dad, which had raised my suspicions about them in the first place. Mary then went on to inform me that she had returned the entire fund to my dad and had asked him to never contact her again. She told me that she found their entire affair extremely creepy and couldn't accept anyone else as her father. I assured Mary that she did the right thing, especially since my dad hadn't even acknowledged or accepted his mistake until now. My uncle grimaced, clearly still angry, and told me how the night he found out everything, he had driven to my dad's place ready to punch him to death. However, Mary stopped him and because he loved her so much, he held back. Otherwise, he said my dad would be six feet under. I understood how frustrating it must have been for him to have raised his little girl for so long, only to find out that she wasn't even biologically his. What my father had done was the highest level of betrayal between any sibling. After my conversation with Mary and my uncle, I feel much better about my decision to cut off my dad. As for my brothers and me, we are doing just fine. The three of us are family, and we will always have each other's backs. I talk to them regularly, and we are planning on getting jobs in the same city in the future, so we can all live together.